This ministry is made possible by the generous donations of friends and viewers of Greater Things. Hey everyone, we're off the set in Cleveland, Tennessee, bringing you a special episode from Bible Training Institute. Uh, Co-hosting with me today is Brother Donnie Eastep, Regional Overseer, and we're glad to have him with us today. Brother Donnie, tell him a little bit about yourself. It's great to be here, Brother Josh. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, thrilled to be able to be a part of Greater Things today. As he said, I am a regional overseer of a place we call the Heartland Region, and that's made up of five states. We've got Illinois, Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, and Ohio. And in that area, we've got 18 churches. And I think about 260 members. Got a good work there. A lot of wonderful people. A lot of wonderful young people that love to watch your program. Well, we're glad that you're with us today. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Bible Training Institute. And BTI has been an amazing experience. Amazing experience for me. Uh, I first attended BTI about eight years ago. Um, and I feel like it has really transformed my ministry. It's benefited me in so many ways. When you come here, Brother Josh, you get the opportunity not only to share with others that are in similar situations as yourself, but I feel like our instructors are just the cream of the crop. Uh, you get wonderful instruction all day long, opportunities to pray and seek the Lord with people that face similar things as what you're facing in your life and ministry. Uh, for me, it was 2001, the first time I came. It's been a few years, but it's been a blessing, and I thank God for it. Yes. Well, today um, we want to talk about uh, the theme of BTI, which is into his presence. So we want to dedicate this entire episode to talking about coming into the presence of God and what exactly that involves and what it means. Uh, so we're going to be hearing from some of the instructors, and we're looking forward to this today. To feel the presence of the Lord, amen, is... <laughs> It's so wonderful to be in the presence of the Lord. And being in the presence of the Lord isn't just when we go to church on Sundays or Wednesdays or for VBS or church camp, but we can be in our car, we can be in our prayer closet, uh, we can be in our kitchen. There's many times that the Lord has just moved. You know, while I was in the kitchen and my kids are going, what is happening to mama right now? But I thank the Lord that I can be in His presence. First, I would, I would, I would tell you, you you've got to believe. You've got to, you've got to believe that He's real, and you've got to believe in His truth, and, and you just got to begin to pray and seek and ask God to um, just help you with whatever, and just come into your life and ask Him if He would be in your presence, so then you can be in His presence. Amen. In the day in which we live, um, most people are not familiar with the presence of God. Uh, they're not even, even in the religious scene. And that's because society is moving further and further from God. Uh, so how important is it uh, that this young generation connect with the presence of God? First of all, Brother Farley, and I'd like to say that I appreciate the opportunity uh, to be able to come and join uh, you on this special segment of Greater Things, and I'd like to say I'm thrilled of what that uh, you're doing with Greater Things and how that you're expanding it, being able to reach out to uh, people on a greater uh, platform. I've heard some good reports, and I, I thank the Lord for the vision that God has, has given you for this. Uh, in regards to the question uh, about the presence of God, without question, there, it's paramount that this upcoming generation experience God and realize the importance of God in their lives. I think about Moses. Um, Moses had a deep, life-enriching encounter with God, with his presence of God there even at the burning bush before God began to use him and open up doors. Um, 
even Jacob, when the ladder stretched down from heaven to earth, that was an experience uh, with God. Isaiah chapter 6, the scripture talks about how that he saw uh, angels encircling the throne of God, crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. That was a an experience in the presence of God. And Paul had that life-changing experience with God as well. Then A.J. Thomason, he had that life-changing experience with the presence of God. And God always initiates uh, 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 using somebody uh, in a greater way with that presence, with that life changing. So as people come to know God in a greater fashion, it's, it's certainly going to change their lives. And they, we're, we're living in a society today that uh, they're absent of the presence of God. And as we pray and seek God, uh, I believe we're going to see a revival. And I'm thankful to see so many people that is hungry for the presence of God. Yes, absolutely. Um, so what do you think will happen uh, if this generation does not connect with the presence of God? What, what effect do you think it would have? Um, first of all, I'm grateful that there are a lot of young people that are connecting with God and they are hungry for the presence of God and they're doing everything they can to experience that on a daily basis. But on the flip side, as you mentioned uh, here, it's disheartening to know that there's so many, uh, so many people in the, um, they don't know anything about the, the hand of God and the experience of God, the revival of God that you and I remember uh, growing up in in homes and seeing God break out. And because of that, we're certainly seeing uh, the result of that in today's society. There's more violence than ever before. Uh, There's more suicide than ever before. We see um, a greater measure of sexual immorality that is plaguing our society. So as the younger people become detached from the presence of God. We see an influx um, of violence and and sinfulness. So there is a clear need for the presence of God. When God's presence is removed, certainly the sin element is more prevalent. Definitely a a negative effect um, on society as a whole uh, when the presence of God is absent in our youth. Um, uh, So what do you think... uh, how do you think it would impact uh, society if this young generation were to get connected with the presence of God and really put themselves in God's presence? It would certainly change everything. Um, it would change the scope. It would change the atmosphere. Um, just as you was asking that question, I got to thinking about uh, in the early 20th century, as people began to get hungry for revival, revival began to break out, and we we seen... Uh, businesses began to shut down, literally close doors to go and attend revival meetings. We've seen whole communities begin to come out by just droves, young and old alike. They would come because there was a hunger for God. And as that began to happen and that began to change, it changed our nation. There was a, we, we began to see, see a heightened uh, uh, respect for God, uh, more of an embrace uh, of the Bible. Preachers began to preach um, more freely and and that. Um, So it's going to have a great impact. Uh, Think about even back in uh, the early 1900s during Azusa Street, there was a a desire for God to move. And as W.J. Seymour began to pursue after God, I remember reading a history book some time back, that he literally got in between two milk crates. He buried his head in there and he began to talk to God. And from that, we see such a great move of the Holy Ghost begin to happen. And then when you go all the way back to 1896, even over at the Shearer Schoolhouse, they began to seek God and and pray. It just changed the landscape. And I believe that we are in in a moment right now, right here on the precipice of God doing something marvelous. So if our young people could capture the importance of God's presence and seek the Lord in every single service that they go to. Don't sit in the back of the church. Don't just pull back, but get up there. When the altar call is made by the the pastor, by the speaker, go and pray and seek the Lord. And when it's time to worship, put your all into it and allow the Spirit of the Lord to just work and move. And we will see a, a revival begin to stir. And I think if we can just fan the flame and encourage people, hey, experience God. Uh, it's amazing. This morning I was reading a passage of Scripture before I even came to our morning devotion of BTI. 
And uh, let me just preface that by saying we had a wonderful uh, devotion time this morning, God's presence. Uh, I was thinking about this devotion or this uh, uh, segment that we was going to be have taping uh, this morning while the devotion was coming, and God's presence just fell down in this place as we worship the Lord. But uh, going into that, the Lord had laid a scripture on my heart found in Acts chapter 2 about how that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place, and there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all of the house. They experienced the presence of God, but prior to that, they were pursuing God. Now, once they experienced the presence of God because they were pursuing God, they pursued after the mission of God and went out into the world and they preached the gospel. So when we experience God's presence, it's not just for us. So the young people need to understand the, the power of the Holy Ghost, the presence of God is not just for that joyful feeling, but to go out and make a difference, be a difference maker in the world that we're living in. And God's, God's plan and God's will for this young generation to be alive right now on this moment, on this time, time scale, and if they'll seize the moment and go forward in the power of God, I believe great things can happen. And so what we need is a revival of God's presence in our youth. And when they get that, when they get that, that uh, revival of God's presence in their life, uh, just as the early church turned the world upside down, so can the youth of today turn the, our world upside down if they would just get themselves into the presence of God. And as you mentioned, how they pursued God. And um, it's an amazing thing, uh, and uh, amazing things will happen if they can just get themselves in God's presence. I think... Um... To begin, I think this starts with last year's BTI. Um, I came as somebody questioning whether he believed in God at all. I was raised in the church and I, I'm a highly educated individual, but I, I had doubts. And BTI um, last year changed my life. And I thank him for that. And then I went on to uh, Alabama camp last year and then went, went to the um, assembly last year for the first time I, that I can remember. Um, and then I'm back at BTI this year and um, his presence has been felt like never before. And I thank God for his work in me and um, what he's gonna do to, for me in the future and what he's done for me in the past. We've been talking today about being in the presence of God, and that's what the theme of BTI is, is into His presence. So we're talking about how important it is to be in the presence of God. What does it do for our young people to be in God's presence? Um, so what I want to ask you today is what effect does it have once our young people are in His presence? What does it do for them and in their life? It changes them. It um, makes them have a greater desire to serve the Lord. It, uh, once you're in His presence, you never forget that feeling, and you want to stay there, and you want that to grow and just be a stronger relationship with the Lord. Now, you've been actively involved in uh, the camping ministry, uh, working with youth uh, for a number of years. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And um, how has that helped you, working with the youth? Well, we worked with... Um, in the community and doing that it, it really opened my eyes to a lot of things because I think sometimes when we're just working with our youth in the church that they you know we, we they know how to live but when you start working with people that are not within the church your eyes are open because of, of the the divorce and um, parents drugs and just different things that they deal with that that maybe our children don't have to deal with and um it's just an eye-opener to be able to do those things and really have a heart for, for not just certain people, but for everyone. It just helps you to reach out and love those people. Um, so you mentioned um, about the uh, reaching out to those that aren't churched. Um, when the young people that are in the church get into the presence of God, what kind of uh, impact do you think it's going to have on those that are unchurched? I think it will have a great impact on them for the fact that they have something inside of them that will draw others to them. They, uh, they are spirit-filled, and young people, 
they want someone that's not fake. They want someone that's true. And I think that our young people, you know, once they're in his presence and they're truly in his presence, then it's going to manifest itself on the outside and other people will be drawn to that. Absolutely. Well, um, I've been in, in services where just the presence of the Lord, just you could feel, I've even, we had a car experience. We were driving down the road and the Holy Ghost fell down and he drove the car for us. And it's just, I can't explain it, but I know, you know, without a shadow of a doubt that it's very real and that I love the Lord so much. And I'm very glad um, that I've been able to come to this PTI and learn more. We're talking about being in the presence of God. And that's what the theme of BTI is this year, is into His presence. Um, and what I want to ask you here today is, um, how do we get into God's presence? Uh, we've talked about how important it is to be in His presence, but how do we get there? I don't believe it's just coming to church and singing a song and hearing a preacher preach. Um, I believe there has to be some preparation. I'm from the old school, uh, and because I've seen it in people's lives, I believe prayer is absolutely the answer. Um, not only in our homes, but when we come to church together, our services are different. I've been in an era or time in the church when people were prayer warriors, and you knew they were because you felt the effects when you came to church. I remember growing up in a hometown church, a, a lady in our church, that when she walked in the door, she was deaf. I mean, she couldn't hear anything. But she, when she walked in the door, she would scream at the top of her lungs, well, glory. And it would make, I mean, it would make the hair on your neck stand up because you knew that woman had been in the presence of the Lord. I believe we failed in a couple of generations to encourage young people especially, get your prayer closet. Um, and too many have filled their closets with everything other than a prayer bench. And honestly, I'm telling you this from my heart. I feel like church get back to, get back to praying. When we walk through the doors, there'll be a presence that will come with every one of us. Uh, and we will enter into the presence of the Lord. We will already have been there. And we wouldn't have to wait to enter in. We'll be there already. I've been in churches and revivals where... Um, one church in particular, actually it was Zion Hill Church, revival here years ago. Um, the very beginning of, I think it was the 10th night of revival, which was supposed to be five nights. Um, this man walked in the door and I knew him and he'd been backslidden for a long time. And he, when he walked in the door, I shook his hand and I was telling him how glad it, I was to see him. And he said, I've heard you've been having a wonderful revival and tears started flowing. And I said, I think we need to go to the altar, don't you? And he said, yeah, I'd like to go. I want to go right now. He and I walked through these very doors. We went straight to the altar. We never had congregational singing. We never had a message. It was about three hours of nothing but the glory of the Lord in this Zion Hill church. Uh, and that's because preparation was made. People were in, was in the presence of God before they came to church. Um, I think we fail when we come to church to get in the presence. We need to be there before we come to church. And yes. prayer is the only avenue. Yes, I agree with you on that. Um, but this brings us uh, to our next question. And, and that are, that, that's, there's so many hindrances out right. there. Um, what do you think hinders us from getting into the presence of God? I think the spirit of postponing. We postpone praying. We postpone reading the Word. We postpone visitation. We even postpone going to church. Um, what does that say of you and I if we're a child of God? The presence that I want to be in the most is not my family, not my church, but it is my Lord because He's my Savior. Um, and I think a spirit of postponing has destroyed us because time does not permit us at that moment to do what the Spirit is touching our heart to do. So we postpone it to later. And any time I postpone now, I'm getting to the age, I'm ready to go to bed instead of doing what. So I'm learning more and more. I think the older you get, the more you realize this. Don't postpone anymore. Do what the Spirit tells you to do at that moment because you don't yes. know what the next five minutes you're going to be facing that you're going to need what you received in, with that encounter with the Lord. 
And if you fail that encounter, then you don't have what you need when the devil comes at you or the world comes at you or your family comes at you. So I, Absolutely. my estimation uh, or my thinking would be the spirit of postponing. Yes. yes. So many people, they talk about how, um, you know, they want to pray, need to pray. Um, and, you know, they, they want to first thing in the morning, greet the Lord, mm-hmm. um, come before him uh, and, and pray. But there's some folks that just put it off and say, well, I can do it later in the mm-hmm. day. I'll do it on my lunch break. I'll do it, mm-hmm. um, you know, this evening when I get home. And as you said, um, you know, it's late. Sometimes you're tired. You're physically tired. And next thing you know, you find yourself going a whole day without praying. You're right. Um, and that's very important mm-hmm. that we do not postpone what we know that we need to be doing today. I think that's very important for our young people. Especially. Uh, amen. Well, I think to be in the presence of the Lord means to completely escape everything around us. Um, so many times we go to pray and we we allow things like throughout the day to stay in our minds and we focus a lot on that. And But I think coming into the presence of the Lord, you just kind of set all that aside and you focus on Him. A lot of the time when I, like when I'm praying and I try to get into that, like in the zone, I think of the Lord sitting on the throne and I'm at His feet and I'm in His presence and just escaping everything else. And it's, it's a beautiful feeling when you reach that. How does worship bring us into the presence of God? Well, Brother Josh, I feel like that um, when we enter the doors of the church, our hearts have to be prepared, and it's, it's done through the ministry of music. Uh, it's, it would be um, hard for the minister to minister if our hearts hadn't be, been prepared, prepared through worship. And I think about the scripture where it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. And as we begin to worship through uh, the ministry of song, the song service, uh, it opens up our spirits to the Lord that the Lord can minister to our hearts as individuals. And it just, it's an avenue that not only we're worshiping the Lord, but He's ministering to us. So do you feel that um, when we're worshiping and we come into His presence that that a lot can happen. Yes. Uh, there's a lot that God can do yes. uh, with an individual who is worshiping in the presence of God. Yes. Um, I have had experiences where I did not know what the minister was going to preach or what his message was about. And the Lord uh, connects through the message of song and the, the ministry, and it's, it's something that comes together, and God puts that together. And you just, it opens up our hearts to where uh, the Lord can do things for us in that vein of worship that we couldn't ordinarily receive just without that. It doesn't replace the ministry, but it is a time of worship to the Lord. Um, To be in the presence of the Lord, uh, (laughs) it's... um, the most amazing thing <laughs> that you can experience in this world. <laughs> it is, it's like a little piece of heaven right here on earth to be just surrounded by the glory of God. Being in the presence of God to me means depending on Him for everything that I need. It doesn't matter how small the problem is, and you can you can just rely on Him for everything. It means praying all the time, no matter what you need to pray for. Whenever you're going through hard times, just stay, stay tough and don't give up on God. And just always stay in His presence. And I'm so glad to have Him in my life. I'm here with Brother Dustin Hayes, the former General Victory Leaders Band Coordinator of the Church of God. Well, Hayes, it's good to have you with us today. Good to be here with you, Brother Farthing. Thank you. Uh, Brother, how many years did you serve um, the Victory Leaders Band? I was blessed to serve the VLBs from 2009 to 2016, so seven years. Seven years. And in those seven years, um, you've done a lot of traveling. Um, You've experienced many cultures, developed friendships with youth all over the world. Uh, Is there anything that you see 
um, that other youth are doing to get into the presence of God that maybe we're not doing here? What I've seen, I guess no matter where I go, is there's no formula necessarily, no do this and this and this, and every time you do this and this and this, you enter into the presence of God. But in the places where I saw the most freedom, in the places where I saw the most liberty, the most victory, the most power in God's presence, it was as simple as our young people with a hunger and a desire to draw close to the Lord. Our young people with a hunger and a desire to hear the word of God, to, to if I can say it this way, to feast on the word that's presented, and then to humble themselves at the altar in response to that word of God. And in those places, we, I saw strength in our young people. I saw a separation from the world in our young people, a holiness, um, uh, uh, an attitude that was pleasing to the Lord. And I saw great growth in those areas where they were hungry to enter into God's presence and hungry to respond to the scripture, hungry to humble themselves before the Lord. And, um, do you know, no matter the, no matter the circumstances, I, I remember one of the most powerful services, I guess I was in, um, a storm came in, we were having a service under some tarps and a storm came in and all the lights went out and the wind, the wind ripped the tarps and young people on their faces before God and the darkness rain pouring on their heads and, and, and just a, it was a powerful time, but they were hungry enough for God. The circumstances didn't matter. And I saw things like that all over, not, not just outside of the United States, inside the United States. Um, obviously, it was in places where maybe there wasn't as much liberty. And it seemed to me that the difference is just a, um, a greater hunger and a greater desire for the things of God. Absolutely. I think about the scripture um, that tells us, they that hunger sure. and thirst yeah. after righteousness shall be filled. Right. Absolutely. And that's what's happening mm -hmm. when the Word of God is being presented. Exactly. Yeah. And some of these places, the youth, they're so hungry for the Word of God that, that they just indulge in it. It's true. It's true. And, um, is there any encouraging words you would like to offer the viewers today? I suppose based upon the experience that I saw, uh, the encouragement that I would give our young people wherever they are is to gain that same hunger gain that same desire that nothing's more important than the things of God. I suppose it seems a little cliche to us and it, it seems at times like something that we hear, but too often we hear it and we don't put it into practice. We find ourselves lacking or feeling like we're lacking, um, but if we'll hunger for the things of God, if we'll hunger for the Word of God and allow the Word of God to do its work and um, and sometimes that work is convicting and it's reproof and it's correction and instruction in righteousness. It's things that maybe aren't always pleasant to our flesh, but if we'll respond to it and then we'll be hungry enough to really seek the Lord. Um, that's what will give us as our BTI theme scripture says, clean hands and pure hearts and, and allow us to ascend up into his presence right where he wants us to be. That, uh, and really, I suppose when we get that hunger, it's easy to get there because that is where he wants us to be. He, he, he told Israel one time that he wasn't a God far off, but he wanted to be a God near to them. And it's right. the same for us today. Throughout my life, he's, I've seen his presence help me and help me to develop into a good Christian man, and he helps me at school. And I feel like this is very important for a young Christian that he needs to be sensitive to the Word and to the Lord and all that he does. And I feel like whenever I'm in his presence, I should humble myself so I can receive him. We hope today's episode encourages you to come into the presence of the Lord. Allow Him to radically transform your life by entering into His presence. I appreciate you, Brother Estep, being on the show and, and co-hosting today. It's been a blessing. We've enjoyed it. And uh, I just pray that God blesses you in your work and your field of labor. Uh, is there something you'd like to say today? Well, first of all, Brother Josh, thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate getting to be here. I think this is a great ministry, a great opportunity for the youth department. And for you, the viewers that are watching there at home, I just want to say that my prayer for you sincerely is that you would find your way more and more into the presence of God on a daily basis. There's nothing like spending an hour each day or more even in the presence of Almighty God. Let's pray together. 
Father in heaven, we thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for your love and kindness. And I want to thank you, Lord, for your presence. And I can feel right now in my spirit, Lord, as we speak about these things, Lord, as we talk to you, as we endeavor to get closer to you, Father. And for those that are viewing this program, I pray, God, that they would find more and more ways each and every day to become more like you, to spend more time with you, Lord, and to experience your presence. Father, we do thank you. We ask you to bless this ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. We would love to hear from you. So send us an email with your thoughts to gt at thechurchofgod.org or leave us a comment on our Facebook and Twitter feeds. Your feedback will help us to improve each episode and we will know what topics are important to you. You can watch this and future episodes of Greater Things on our website, via our social media pages, or by subscribing to our podcast feeds on Apple's iTunes or Google's Play Store. Until next time, keep your eyes firmly set on Jesus and get ready to see Him perform greater things in your life.